I cannot imagine, especially in this day and age where you or your loved ones go missing without a single clue, nothing. No evidence, no footprints, no fingerprints, no whereabouts. You just disappear and no one knows where you are and you are missing for years. Unfortunately, that's the case for this beautiful girl named Elaine Park who went missing on January 28th, 2017, now almost five years ago. She was 20 years old at the time and she would be 25 years old today. She's still somewhere out there and the family's still looking for her. People wonder if this is a case of a complete stranger having something to do with this or her difficult past involving her friends and family that could be related to her disappearance. Do these last known CCTV footages of her tell a suspicious story or not? This case literally has so many clues, yet no clues at the same time, and it just fascinated me. Kind of like the case that I did with Adnan Syed of him murdering his girlfriend, Heyman Lee. This case is a little bit similar to that in the terms of amount of research, amount of rumors and suspicions and speculations that is out there. And in order for me to spend my full time and attention to these cases, I just want to say big thank you to all my viewers. You guys really encouraged me to really find cases that not a lot of people know about. And to help me continue, big thank you to today's sponsor, Blackout Bingo. I talked about Blackout Bingo not too long ago. It is one of my favorite childhood games. I think we all played bingo growing up, but now that we're adults, we can start making some real money playing bingo. And if you really want that fast brain exercise, this is the perfect game for you. Winning is entirely based on how fast you can react. You and your competitor get the exact same bingo card and then the bingo numbers start getting faster and faster and if you're on the app playing you might get matched with me because you get matched with people all around the world you could also play for free head-to-head -head games as well you'll get matched based on your skill level so if you're an expert you'll play against other great players and if you're a newbie you'll play against new players i love to play brain exercise games whenever i'm in the car in the train whenever i'm taking a break from work perfect game to play when you're on the go getting started is really easy just click the link down below you could enter my code get five and you'll get an extra five dollar and free cash to play with the app when you make your first deposit so if you want to play bingo with me let's go thank you so much to blackout bingo for partnering with me again this is considered still an active investigation so if you guys know any information about this case i'll put all the links down below that you guys need Elaine Park was born on September 24th, 1996. She was around 5 foot 6 and 125 pounds. She also has some tattoos on her arms. You could take a look right here. She also had a nose ring. She was last seen with long black hair with bleached tips. Her race is Korean, but I believe she was born and raised in US California and she also has a younger brother. During her teen years, her parents got a divorce and she lived with her mother in La Crescent, California. Her personality is known to be very outgoing, bubbly, she is not shy. She makes friends easily, she also cheered in high school. She also loved to attend festivals like Coachella and one of the things that she loved to do is write lyrics to music. She wrote poems, she wrote lyrics to rap, she rapped herself, she also acted and she attended small roles in TV films. Decorate and decorate, eventually make a house a home. I want to have movie nights and toast from some place out in Rome. I want to shop for pots and pans at Sur La Table. I want to eventually have minis that look up to me and call me mom. I want to. She was such a creative and a bright girl. After Elaine graduated high school, she attended Pierce College in LA. And on the outside, it seemed like she was very bubbly again, creative, having the fun, best life of her youth. But on the inside, it seems like she was dealing with a lot of personal stuff that we will get into throughout this video. I mean, we don't know if it's really related or not, but I think it's crucial to talk about. So let's talk about the night before she disappeared. And she was with her on and off again boyfriend named Divine. Divine was 19 at the time and again Elaine was 20. According to Divine and some people, it seems like both of them were not like official boyfriend and girlfriends, but at the same time they were dating and seeing each other. I mean, but regardless, like at the end of the day, they were seeing each other. Divine is known to be the son of a successful film producer parents and he lives in California. Calabasas. It's an area known for the wealthy and the celebrities of Hollywood. Elaine and Divine began seeing each other at some time around November of 2016. And these text messages just show you what kind of 
in my personal opinion as i read the text a very chill loving relationship i really didn't see too big of a red flag honestly the conversation really seems like the typical teenager 19 20 year olds relationships that you have it seems like everything was going well until the beginning of january it seems like elaine was going through some personal stuff and january 3rd elaine texts divine claiming that she wanted to work on herself so a lot of people take this as kind of taking a break or breaking up again in my personal opinion from the text that i've seen it doesn't seem to have anything really red flag um he doesn't seem controlling or anything out of the ordinary except for the fact that her friends claim that they both were doing some illegal drugs were involved you know whenever they probably went out partying just to put that information in there from january 20th they start to kind of talk again and divine says you can't hold all that in let it out what's going on so it seems like he knew what elaine might have been going through inside internally we will talk about later what divine said about this message and what he knows that she was going through on the night before she disappeared it seems like the two decide to see each other have a little movie date on january 27th 2017 at around 10 20 p.m they went to the movies elaine did have her own car but for whatever reason according to divine he claims that she wasn't fit to drive so they decide to take an uber to the movies and back according to friends and family they guessed that the reason why she wasn't fit to drive was because they probably smoked some green stuff after the movies, they came back to Divine's place or his parents' place and they decided to spend the night. According to Divine, he believes it was around 4 a.m. when she woke up in a panic, shaking, singing, and left his house at around 6 a.m. without any explanation. He claims that she got dressed so fast and just decided to leave, didn't say anything, and left. It is presumed that Divine might have gotten the time wrong because in the CCTV footage, there is a timestamp of exactly when she she left. She is seen in the CCTV footages of leaving the premises and driving off with her own car out of the gated community. The interesting thing is the footage cuts off about five minutes after she leaves, which some people say is a convenient error, but this error is by the police. They claim that this happens pretty frequently when they are transferring, you know, CCTV footages into the computer or whatever, and some of the files just get deleted. We'll come back to Divine, but let's move on to Elaine's mother, Susan. Now, Elaine's mother, Susan, does confess that her and Elaine, actually the whole family, never really had like a loving, typical family relationship. Susan claims that she was adopted and she found out later in life and just the things that she went through in her own childhood she believes led to her having like this unloving relationship with her whole family. It is known that Elaine and Susan really fought a lot about a lot of things and they decided to really live separate lives and Elaine's mother, Susan, really didn't know what Elaine did day to day. They only talked briefly about maybe money and whenever they decided to talk about something, they got into fights. Susan's behavior towards Elaine and her own daughter is very controversial. For example, on this day, Elaine was supposed to pay back that $20 to her mother by 6 p.m. sharp. When Elaine did not pay the money back at 7 p.m., Susan texts her what happened to the money. Elaine texts her mother to give her time by the end of the night. Susan texts her to keep your word. When Susan didn't see money from Elaine till the next morning, she started to call and text her about the money again and again. Susan tried to reach out to Elaine the next day on the 28th multiple times until around 3 p.m. when her phone went off. It is noted that Elaine would go off on spontaneous trips and not tell the family for multiple days. I guess this time Susan's motherly instincts start to kick in a little bit and she believed that this time was very different than the other times that she would not tell them. When Elaine did not come home for two days, Susan reported this to the police. They told her that because she is an adult, 20 years old, she should wait a day. And finally, on January 30th, there was an official missing persons report. And just like that, days passed by, and on February 2nd, five days since she went missing, 
Her car was found abandoned 20 miles from Devine's house, approximately 45 minutes drive on the Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu. The strange thing is, her car ignition was turned on, but the battery was dead. So the engine wasn't on, but the battery was on. Her bag, laptop, her two cell phones, ID, cash, everything was left behind. And according to the police, it was neatly left behind. So it doesn't look like there was a struggle unless someone put it and organized it neatly on purpose. Also, no blood was found on her car. Now clearly whatever happened, it seems like Elaine did not intend to run away or leave for that long, especially if she left the car battery on. According to people who live there, this area, this high way has a lot of people, a lot of traffic, no matter what time of the day or night. And it's known to be relatively a safe area. There were some searches that went on near the area, anywhere that Elaine could be, or even her body could be, and even including cadaver dogs and helicopter was called to try and look for her and nothing. So in terms of physical evidence, this is it. Cadaver dogs also could not find any trace of scent of Elaine minus her car. So it seems like to the police and a lot of people, they believe that her car was dropped off there and something happened in another area. So without any physical evidence, people start to look into the people that Elaine was the closest with before she disappeared. And we're gonna talk about Elaine's mother, Susan, first. So there were a lot of moves made by Susan that a lot of people did not understand. For example, the day that she went missing and the day before, people wanted to see what Susan was texting Elaine. But Susan claims that she deleted all the texts between her and Elaine because she has this kind of like OCD kind of problem when it comes to like keeping a lot of clutter in her phone. But people don't understand why Susan would delete the text between her and Elaine if Elaine never responded to her text, and especially now that she is missing and haven't been home. In a way, I do kind of understand because I know that older people, especially even my parents, like they delete a lot of stuff, not much anymore. Back in 2017, even my parents, when they had iPhone like eight or something, seven or eight, my mom would always ask me to delete emails and things. She just did not like that red notification on her phone. So in a way, I kind of do understand. But at the same time, your daughter's missing and to delete all evidence and traces on your phone with her is it's just too much. I would like to note that Elaine had two phones that the police found in her car. One was her old phone that just did not turn on and her current phone that she was using. It was returned to her mother and her mother tried to unlock the phone but you only get 10 passcode attempts and she used all of them up and her phone went into a passcode lock mode. So they could not even open her phone to check what happened within the last 24 hours because the last 24 hours was not backed up into her iCloud in her computer. Also very strange, Elaine's Facebook login history was erased raised. It was deleted and no one knows who's done this. Just two months since Elaine has been missing, Susan claims that she was getting ready to rent out Elaine's room because of financial hardship. She also put Elaine's cats up for adoption and it was taken by a shelter. According to the shelter, one of the cats got sick immediately after being placed due to the stress of being abandoned and they actually had to euthanize one of the cats. The podcast crew of To Live and Die in LA were able to rescue one of her other cats and it was returned to Elaine's brother. And Elaine's brother actually did not know that his family cat that he grew up with was put up for adoption by his own mother. On month three, since Elaine went missing, Susan started to get rid of Elaine's furniture in her room. And thank God the podcast crew actually came to grab her furniture before the dumpster truck came to dispose of it, which is crazy. How can any family member get rid of their family member stuff that they went missing? Like who knows when she's gonna come back? How do you know that she's not gonna come back? And what if she comes back and sees all her belongings in her room being rented out to someone else? Her cats being put up for adoption? Like it is, this is one of the biggest controversy and the act that Susan did that a lot of people just don't understand. On top of that, it seems like Lane's father got her car back after she went missing. And according to the father, he subleased it out to somebody else. 
I, I was lost for words when I heard this because it seems like the whole family before they even have any conclusion so soon like can you imagine your father your mother or your brother or whoever your sister going missing and then two months later you're like oh let me just get rid of the furniture of my father and lease his car out because I'm having financial hardship like do something else to relieve your financial hardship not get rid of your family's belongings for for a little bit of money extra income a month but the podcast crew wanting to leave the evidences and the presence of Elaine until we found her decided to pay about $1,500 a month to Susan so that they could preserve her belongings and her room but again, it just shows you unfortunately how disconnected it seems like the family is, even her mother and her father. Cadaver dogs were also called to search Susan's house where Elaine used to live as well. Now these dogs are specially trained to find human decomposition, even picking up scents from decades earlier. So professionals say they have about 95% accuracy. The cadaver dogs picked up something in the walls, Elaine's closet door, and a suitcase. Although this is also confusing because because apparently there's two signs that the dogs give. There's like a 100% certain signs and there's like an interest where they do smell something but it's not like 100% something is there. And according to the professionals and what the podcast was talking about, they believe that the dogs picked up something in Susan's house because Susan had the belongings of Elaine's items that was inside of her car. Friends say that Elaine was a smart girl. She was also aware of everything and don't understand um, how this could have happened to Elaine. This is where we enter one crucial theory that a lot of people think that might really hold the key to what happened to Elaine. On July 27th, 2015, Elaine attends a rapper concert with some of her friends. And it seems like according to Elaine's tweets and her friends, she was actually S.A. assaulted when she went backstage at this concert. Her friends claimed that they were not there backstage, but that she was very intoxicated with a certain substance. And while she was heavily intoxicated or under the influence, she was S.A.ed. And it seems like someone also taped or have a film of this incident. Elaine tweeted about that night here on her account, which is now deleted. And according to the private investigators and one of the theories, they believe Divine was actually connected and were friends with the people who have done this to her backstage. And because this footage of what happened that night was actually going around and she found out about it, she believes that now she wanted to come forward and talk to the police. According to some of the friends, it seems like Elaine wanted to get the help or support of Divine because he somehow knew the people and that's one of the reasons why Elaine decided to meet Divine that day on January 27th. But according to the tweets, it clearly says that she will not be taking it to the authorities. But this footage apparently was going around two years later and she just could not take it anymore. This was giving her nightmares. This was something that she personally did not remember what really happened to her but was affecting her day to day and now she really wanted to potentially go to the authorities and expose these people. But this information was very hard to confirm and there's actually no proof or evidence of this. And it seems like it's something that some of the friends and people online started to potentially kind of make up in order to find an explanation. The podcast crew, when interviewing different friends of Elaine and who knew her, there was different contradicting statements and it seems like there's really no solid truth or an answer to this. According to Divine, who finally came forward and did an interview with To Live and Die in LA, he claims that he remembers her having a lot of stuff in her mind, and most of it was regarding her mother, Susan. And the whole reason why, you know, she hit him up that day and they decided to go to the movie was because, again, she was dealing with a lot of things within her family and internal stuff that he just wanted to make her feel good and just have a chill day. In the interview, he also also confirmed again that in the middle of the night she got up and dressed so fast was in a panic singing to herself and said I need to go I need to go and left his reaction was WTF like where are you going 
morning like it's middle of the night or the morning it's so early like where are you going and she just did not say anything to him and she just left on her own like where would she have to go at 6 a.m in the morning all of a sudden i mean was she on something did someone call her and tell her to come somewhere did she just ring a bell something like nobody knows what was in her thoughts that day Police looked into Divine and the theory of this case and they could not find anything. They did search his home and they did talk to Divine and they say that they cannot find anything related from him to Elaine's disappearance. When going through Elaine's computer and her backed up iCloud information from her phone and when they were looking through her past text, they found something shocking. Not from her boyfriend, not from her friends but from her own mother. Few months before she went missing, texts show Susan sending nasty, angry messages to Elaine. And some of these included, die, 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 exclamation point. You make me effing sick. And how she was messing her up in about borrowing $15 from her and like a couple money here and there. And it was always about money and just a really bad relationship between her and her mother. This explosive incident seems to be related to when Elaine and her friend got into a car crash eight months before she went missing. According to her friends, it seems like Elaine's mother was instructing Elaine to claim insurance money by going to the chiropractor. Although she was fine and she didn't really have injuries herself from that minor incident. According to Elaine's friends, Elaine claimed that she felt uncomfortable doing this because it felt like she was doing insurance fraud or scam because she really wasn't hurt but her mother seemed like she really wanted to get this settlement money the die 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 messages seems to come when elaine decided not to go to the chiropractors and was kind of messing up the whole insurance plan and susan got really mad and messaged her own daughter die 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 multiple times her friend who was in the crash remembers how elaine just jumped out to help the other person that was hurt in the other car while helping other people she claims that elaine's hands was a little bit bloody and it just showed you what kind of person elaine was like she other texts show that allegedly susan got laid off from her job as well and elaine also got laid off from her restaurant job so neither of them seem to be working and these texts to show how they were really sensitive and arguing about every single dollar from like just a couple dollars up to a $30. This, this is really crazy because, you know, I mean, she's your own daughter. I mean, if I asked my parents for $20, $30, they would not ask me to pay it back. But according to Elaine's mother, she was so strict with Elaine because Elaine had a bad habit of spending money. So she wanted to discipline Elaine about how money is very essential to surviving and that she cannot just be spending money anywhere and everywhere. Elaine's mother claimed that she remembers how Elaine once had $800 and she just spent it the next day so that she was really careless about her spending habits. On March 31st, two months after she went missing, Susan puts a calendar reminder on her phone at 9 a.m hide it. That day at 10.30 a.m., Malibu Police Department was to come to and see her room. 1 p.m., she notes, put back, hide item, shed. People found this to be very, very suspicious, but Susan, Elaine's mother claims that this was regarding some green stuff that she found in Elaine's room, and she just was very embarrassed by it and wanted to hide it before the police came. Now, I don't think this really is significant as well, because you know, if she was really trying to hide something, why do it an hour before the police comes? Um, I'm sure it would have been done and not left any evidences on her phone or anywhere. So I don't think this is really significant or related to Elaine's disappearance. The reward money was raised to around $250,000 for anyone who had tips and it was done through a press release and they got tons of tips but again no tips really let them anywhere and actually a lot of it was just I saw some Asian girl some psychics calling them some people just trying to claim money and like doing fraud stuff so no tip let them anywhere. The Uber driver was also tracked down that drove Divine and Elaine the day that they were coming back from the movies. And the driver claims that he noticed nothing, red flags, they were kissing, hugging, just kind of seemed like they were drunk. So nothing that really alerted him. Finally, about a year later, they were able to find a specialist that was able to unlock Elaine's phone. And the interesting thing is though, the specialist found out that her actual passcode to her phone was the numerals to Divine's street address. I just think it does tell you that Elaine and Divine actually had 
a deeper connection or at least to Elaine she found the relationship to be a bit more of a significance than kind of how Divine and Divine's parents kind of portrays it to be. To you guys, is this of a significance or what do you guys think? I mean, some people say that, you know, it's something that teenagers, 20 year olds, 21 year olds do. But you know, a lot of people say, come on, like what's the coincidence? The day after she meets him, she goes missing and the phone passcode is also his street address. Like I do understand, you know, the family and why they still have that question mark. Here's the phone data from January 28th. At 6.28 AM, Find My Friend app was used. And it looks like her phone sent a picture to Divine's phone of her location. This is a little confusing as back in 2017, I guess you could have kind of shared your location with those who you gave access to. But experts say that this might not have been herself, that this was more of an automatic thing that the phone sent, where both of them were most likely not aware of it on each other's phone. They also could not find the ping of what her phone sent to Divine. At 7.50 a.m., the Pandora music app is used, which indicates that she might have been listening to music in her car. At around 9.32 a.m., there's a notification from Pandora app that asked, are you still listening? Don't miss a second of the music you love. You know, sometimes apps or even on like smart TVs, they send a notification. If you've been running the app for too long, it says, are you still watching? Are you still listening? So I'm not sure if this notification was sent because her app was constantly running without her touching her phone. Or if this is just notification sent when you stop playing music as well and it's just and that's why it says don't miss a second of the music you love. If the app was still running on her phone and she did not touch anything physically on her phone, it seems like she possibly could have went missing or something happened to her at around 8 a.m. to 9 32 a.m. At 8.51 a.m. Susan texts Delane, now, $20, now. And this text, professionals say that it seems to be unread. 10.13, 10.15 a.m., three incoming calls from Divine. 1.10 p.m., text from her friend Sadie, what are you doing? 1.33, 1.34, two calls from Divine, all missed. 136 to 142, Susan calls three times. Again, none of these calls seems to be picked up. No other activities of her opening her Instagram or other social media, and no other suspicious texts were found. The specialist also said that it is possible for someone to go through a phone and delete certain texts, but they would not know that through the data, or at least the phone back then, they wouldn't know. So here are some of the theories of what could have happened to Elaine, and unfortunately, we really only have theories and we don't have any physical evidence because even her phone after being unlocked shows no suspicious activity. Now theory one could be that Elaine was actually hanging out with a 19 year old kid just before she went missing or a couple days before. And supposedly he was again like just someone she was seeing. According to her friends, Elaine would kind of date random people around and he happened to be one of those guys. At one point when they were in the car together, they were stopped by the police. And this guy, the 19 year old, actually had a gun inside of his back pocket and he was arrested and there was a trial. She was supposed to testify regarding this case only a couple days after she went missing. This guy was also released from custody only two days before she went missing. According to some people, maybe this 19 year old was afraid of what Elaine was gonna say during court and he did something to her. Text message records also show how he was pretty aggressive, that he would also threaten and send a lot of messages to Elaine. According to some of the friends, they remember Elaine telling them that she didn't know what to say or, or don't wanna say anything wrong because quote, he's friends with a lot of underground rappers. The podcast crew was able to meet with this 19 year old. They did an interview also because Elaine had no knowledge about this gun. Like they don't believe that anything Elaine said would have even affected his trial. And at least as of right now, they have no evidence that he was related to Elaine's disappearance. A second theory, something that the power of investigators and Susan, her mother, believe still might be possible is that Divine had something to do with it. The private investigators claim that he looked into Divine's friends and the closest people he hangs out with are known to be in a particular gang or a group. They post very explicit 
illicit things online including flashing guns, money, and a lot of criminal stuff that I cannot talk about here. Of course, as as, as Elaine's mother or family or private investigators, this is very upsetting to find. But again, according to the police, Divine and his parents have been very cooperative. They sent the footage, they've been to their house, and they don't find anything. The next theory is that Elaine might have self-harmed herself due to her going through some depressions and you know fights with her mother. And maybe she woke up that day being intoxicated, certainly having the urge or certain feeling, and she has done something to herself. But this theory might be very highly unlikely because they found, again, no evidence of her ever wanting to hurt herself that day or even near that day. Where her car was found, there is no cliff or anywhere you could enter the waters. There's only sand and low waters and it is a very unusual way for someone to self-harm themselves. There was also a helicopter looking for any bodies, any bodies washing up and there was nothing. And the police have ruled it that it is most likely that this is an involuntary case meaning she did not do this to herself. The next theory is kind of like a combination of theories that it was, was a stranger, she was trafficked, she got out to maybe help someone and then they just took her. Like this was a complete stranger that knows where she is. But if this happened, there's really no evidence that they're able to go off of at all at this point. And the last theory is that she might have ran away. Again, due to her and her traumatic experiences, maybe she just decided to drop everything and go. Again, this is highly unlikely because her phone and cash was found in her car. And there is no sign of Elaine till this day. In my opinion, if this was a stranger trying to rob someone, why didn't they take her cash? Why didn't they take her phone or her laptop? Some a random person most likely, you know, at least would have taken cash or at least would have taken and turned off the phone and the laptop and you know but there was nothing taken so a lot of people believe could this really have been a stranger or was it someone that knew her and just wanted to take her and Susan doesn't deny that you know she had a very tough relationship with Elaine um, that she didn't get love from her her father like from her friends or anybody else and that maybe that somehow contributed to her maybe being picked up by someone that and she was kind of very open to letting maybe even strangers in because she didn't feel that love because of so many suspicions Elaine's mother did take a polygraph test and there was no deception found so people do not believe that Elaine's mother had anything to do with Elaine's disappearance and Elaine's brother Dustin has an explanation of why Susan's behavior is so odd and it could be because Susan just never really had that connection with her own daughter and because they fought all the time even violently sickly to say like she kind of had a little bit of a relief that maybe Elaine wasn't there now that she doesn't have to constantly fight and have this tension in the household. Of course, loves her daughter, but the way it's like a love and a hate relationship where she doesn't have that kind of bond and attachment that a lot of you know parents and children are supposed to have, but that does not mean that she had anything to do with her disappearance. So here is what we're really left with at the end of the day. Why did Elaine have to leave at 6 a.m. in the morning? Why was she panicky? Where did she have to go? I mean, there was no text, at least that was found in her phone that indicates that someone was calling her, someone was telling her to come here or there. But where does she want to go at 6 a.m. in the morning? Susan claims that technically in the CCTV you don't see Elaine getting into the car by herself, meaning maybe there was someone inside of her car. There's still a Find Elaine Facebook page that updates time to time and it's been five years since her disappearance. And it seems like as of right now, at least the people that was the closest to her before she went missing. There's no evidence that relate them to her disappearance at all at this moment. So it is such a mystery of what happened to her. I am desperately waiting for a conclusion in this case, rather she's found or what happened to her. So I hope that you guys, if you guys know anything or share this video, share some of the links and go check it out. So thank you so much for watching. See you guys in my next video.